Alright, let's talk about quadratics. This includes this, this, and yeah, this. So let's start with the basics. This equation is linear, or degree of 1. So what does degree in mathematics mean exactly? Well, the degree of an equation is linked to the index of its pronumeral. This is to the power of 1, thus it is a degree of 1. Linear equations such as this can be solved simply by rearranging the terms and one solution can be found. Quadratic equations, on the other hand, are to degree of 2. They have a highest power of 2. Unlike linear equations, quadratics have multiple solutions, such as the example. X can have both a solution of 10 and negative 10, which can be notated through the plus or minus symbol. Simple quadratics such as this can be solved through square rooting, but this doesn't always work. Take this. It is still a quadratic, except now it has a linear term added onto it. You can no longer rearrange it, so what can you do? So what if we had some sort of a formula to help us out? That's right, let's try to derive one. Let's replace the coefficients of x squared x and the extra constant term with a, b, and c. This way it'll work for every single possible quadratic equation of this form. First, we're able to subtract c from both sides, then multiply by 4a. This will get us this following combination where we're then able to add b squared on both sides and then add some brackets, square them, and get a binomial theorem. Then afterwards you're able to square root, add negative b, then just divide it by 2a. Okay, yes, it is rather long, but just bonk it into your head somewhere and I'm sure you'll be fine. So using the formula, we can plug in a, b, and c. a equals 2, b equals 7, and c equals 3. Now that they're plugged in, we're able to find the two answers, negative 3 and negative 0.5. So that's part 1 and part 2 done. Time for part 3 and 4. Now if you know what graphing is, skip ahead. If you don't, then it'll take like a couple seconds to explain. Take the Cartesian plane, the x-axis and the y-axis. Depending on your input, you can fill every point on the plane. Graphing refers to typing statements or functions in order to generate a graph. As an example, x equals y will highlight every point where x equals y. As an example, this point is 2, 2. And well, yeah, 2 does equal 2. You're able to change the direction of this line by changing the coefficient of x. This direction is known as a slope. While a linear graph is straight, a quadratic graph is curved. This kind of a shape is actually called a parabola. It's one of the four conic sections. The reason for this shape is that a change in x no longer correlates to a constant change in y. This is referred to as a nonlinear relation. While a linear graph is straightforward, a parabola possesses many interesting properties. It's one of the four conic sections, but what we will be focusing on is the vertex of a parabola, the point in which the parabola has a slope of zero. This introduces us to the next formula, the vertex form. When an equation is in this form, the coordinates of the vertex would be hk. Yeah, that's literally it. Quite a long formula, but the concept is quite simple. Let's try an example. Let's use that same equation from earlier, 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. It can be rearranged in brackets like this, then raised to the second power, and ta-da! That's vertex form right there, meaning that the coordinates of this parabola would be negative 1.75 and negative 3.125. And that's the end of it, you've gotten a basic understanding of quadratics. Let's summarize. A quadratic equation is a degree of 2. It can have up to two solutions. When graphed, it produces a curve known as a parabola. The vertex of the curve can be calculated using the vertex form equation. And, well, that's that. Quadratics in a nutshell. Oh god, there's two of them.